Hi, need a ride? Hop on in. I'm headed to Julia's Trucking Cafe. Come on, let's go. We made it just in time. Come on, let's go get a seat. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Julia's Truck and Cafe. If the recording is a little bit staticky or a little bit breaking up, please continue to listen. Um, I do, I will tell everybody a secret, I do these episodes out of my truck wherever I'm at in the country. So sometimes I'm not in the best area or the best signal. If it gets too bad, I do record the episode to make it clear for everybody. Tonight we're going to be talking about what items or things you should carry in your truck. And this is a variety of different items. This episode is mainly for the new truck driver out here, the newbie, the rookie, uh, Beanhorn, to... um, help them get in their own truck, have all of the items that they need, and a lot of items, I posed this question to one of the groups that I'm in on social media, and I got a a lot of good responses, so I'm going to go ahead and read some of those this evening and chat about why you should carry this certain item or certain thing. To get started, Like I said, I posed this question, what items or things should you carry in your truck on social media? And some of the responses that came back, Christopher Yanni said extra food and water, extra warm clothes, just in case you would get stranded. And that's a really great idea. You never know when you're going to be at a shipper, receiver, what the weather is going to turn into. It could be sunny one minute. It could be a storm front coming in look at all the nor'easters that we've been having in the last few weeks you never know when you're going to be parked on the side of the interstate and you don't didn't eat all day because you were busy delivering picking up your next load getting on down the road and you're like five miles away from a truck stop and they close the interstate down god forbid so that's a really good idea to have some extra water food and warm clothes in your truck with you. He also mentioned a small toolkit so you can do some small repairs, whether it's a, a hose or um, anything that would need to tighten up a bolt or tighten up a, a screw or anything like that. And um, I asked him what kind of tools does he think he should be in the toolkit, and he was mentioning screwdrivers, wrenches, maybe a small socket set, pliers. Definitely a tire gauge and a tire thumper. Tire thumper is a small, either metal or wooden. They have them in like a little baseball bat looking shape that you go around and you thump your tires and you can hear the difference of an aired up tire and a low tire. It's a different sound. Um, I would prefer an air gauge on the tires and not so much a tire thumper. Back in the old days, there again, when I first started, that's all we was we would thump the tires. I also have a friend out there. He's going to probably not like this very much, but my friend says he takes a hammer and he wails on the tires to really make sure that they're aired up. And I'm like, um, isn't that what an air gauge is for? But anyway. And if you dri- uh, Richard Miller says if you drive a reefer or a dry van, Keep cheap coffee in your truck to eliminate odors in trailers. Just a small two-pound can, pound can of coffee, and uh, you sprinkle it in the floor of your truck, and it would really eliminate the odors 
in the trailer so when you're picking up your next load, it doesn't smell like cow hides or tires or candles even. Uh, if you're picking up the next load, it would be food. So you'd want to sprinkle that down in the trailer, close up the doors, let it sit for a couple hours, but then you have to sweep it out. You can't just leave it on the floor. You have Go ahead and have to sweep it out. Brad Donovan said he used to carry pantyhose and put coffee in them and put them in a Ziploc bag. If he had a bad smell, he would just take a few out and place it in the trailer, and this way it's an easy way to clean up. And that's a really good tip. That's an awesome idea, Richard Miller says. Um, I've never thought of it. Uh, that's the first time I've really heard of it in my trucking career. So you would t- he takes pantyhose, he pours some coffee in them, put them in a Ziploc bag so you still have the fresh, and they still stay fresh. Um, and then when he has a bad smell, he just takes it, and either lays it out on the floor or something like that, hangs it in the trailer. Kevin McGrath says cloths, blankets, food that doesn't need to be cooked in water. Um, Donovan says jumper cables and two gauge wire and map and pen and paper and extra phone charger. That's another good idea. What, uh, it, you're always running out of a phone charger or one may go bad on you. You always have a um, extra phone charger is always good. Also, a big hammer and a small bag of kitty litter. Kitty litter would help you get unstuck at times or even for uh, uh, any kind of a spill you uh, may have. It's always good, and it's really easy to clean up. Mike Shop, is toilet paper. He says, don't forget the toilet paper. I had to laugh at that one. Barbara Price, for us ladies out there, a nail clipper and a file, hand lotion and chapstick. That's some personal items that you can have in your truck that you shouldn't forget. Woodley said when he drove a semi, he had a case of MREs and a case of water on hand at all times. Paper towels, a sleeping bag, and baby wipes. MREs, food, instant food. All water, everyone's saying water, so you should always have bottled water on hand at all times. Paper towels, sleeping bag to keep you warm, with along with the extra blankets, baby wipes, wash your hands when you get them dirty, or you know, keep yourself also keep yourself from getting sick. There again, I know another friend that always has a can of Lysol with them in his truck, always sprays everything down with Lysol, and he doesn't get sick much. Another good comment is. My- he was saying a portable urinal jug make them for both male and females and at one time or another you're going to need it because the some of these job sites or some of these ship receivers all they have a portable jug. you really want to go to the bathroom and a portable jug? I don't so and yes it comes in hand cat I'm your name is Polish I'm Polish, but that's just too long of a name for me to pronounce, and I really don't want to butcher it. But she was saying a checklist of all the above, all are good things. Billy Campbell said a boomstick for protection and a can of wasp spray. Um, we got a little laughing going on about the boomstick it isn't a broomstick it's a boomstick and what he was meaning by that is a you know a gun a 45 for a newbie i would not recommend that um because every state is different on their concealed laws and you just don't want to get yourself in trouble with that whatsoever with a list of items that no one thought of. How about a rain suit or a raincoat? I even have an umbrella. It's, I'm in Illinois right now. It's raining in Illinois. Boots. When you get into some of these dirt parking lots, truck stop parking lots, they, uh, the holes in the 
for your truck? You know, boots. How about a hair dryer or a blow dryer? I found several different uses besides the obvious for my hair dryer that I have. Dryer. And you should also have an extension cord that you can plug in my inverters in the side box. And when I had a problem with my air dryer, and there's a little pitcock on the bottom of the air dryer, and that was stuck open, and it was middle of winter. It, I rubbed it around with my glove to try to get all the dirt off, and it was still open. It won't, it's not going to build up air. When that little pitcock is stuck open, it's not going to build up air. You, the last thing you want to do is smack it with a hammer because that's under pressure. You'll break it because it's only plastic. So I, in turn, got out my extension cord, plugged it into my inverter in my side box, plugged in my blow dryer, found the pitcock, and warmed it up with the hair dryer a high outside, and it popped closed, and it's been working fine ever since. So that's one good way to use a hair dryer. Everybody would think, oh, why would you have a hair dryer in your truck? Prime example, a torch is too hot. One of the little mini torches is too hot. The pickcock is plastic. So you can't smack it with a hammer. I took the butt end of a screwdriver rubber handle and tried tapping it closed and that wouldn't work either. Nobody ever mentioned a first aid kit, band-aids, butterfly bandage, some gauze, some first aid tape, ice pack, uh, ibuprofen, Tylenol. We all get sick. You could have ibuprofen of the Tylenol when you're not when you're not feeling that hot. The bandages, if you if you happen to cut yourself, smack your finger, smash your finger in a door. I've seen women, you know, open up the trailer doors and we're too close on themselves in the head with the trailer handle. A nice pack to, to get the lump down on your forehead. And there again, the extension cord. And last but not least, air hose with glad hand connector on the end and you have the air chuck on the opposite end. They sell them at 60 feet sections already pre-done. I had a DOT officer doing an inspection on my truck or trailer and actually tell me she was so glad to see that I had that glad hand airline in my side box because if the she found a tire that was underinflated like at 50 pounds she would allow me to go ahead and air it up there on the spot and would not put me out of service because that is an out of service violation put it out of service and give me a ticket so these are all really good I'll go ahead and run down through them again and then we'll talk about a few items that I see as far as different groups that I'm in again to uh, chat more this evening. So again, extra food and water, warm clothes, small toolkit containing screwdrivers, wrenches, socket set, pliers, tire gauge, and a tire thumper, a cheap can of coffee to eliminate odors, also Lysol, um, Clorox wipes I carry, paper towels, using pantyhose and put a little bit of coffee in them and put them in a bag, and when you need it, you just you have a bad smell, you take it out, and it's easy to clean up. Extra clothes, blankets, and food. Jumper cables, two gauge wire, uh, atlas, pens, papers, an extra phone charger, kitty litter, toilet paper, a nail clipper and a file, hand lotion and chapstick. You can have MREs, sleeping bag, baby wipes, a portable urinal. 
first aid kit. Don't get the boomstick. Also, rain suit, rain jacket, boots, hair dryer, blow dryer, first aid kit, extension cord for the hair dryer, and air hose with the glad hand connector on it. So now I'm going to go into one of my groups, and we're also going to talk about see what kind of questions that some of the newbies have that I can answer. I'm kind of digressing a little bit here. But maybe somebody has a question as far as other kind of things. Um, if you have a pet, make sure that you have a leash, a X leash, collar, um, extra food, water for them, sweater, some kind of jacket if they're a small dog. A lot of people carry chihuahuas or schnauzer. I have a schnauzer or uh, shih tzu, smaller dogs. I always carry extra food in the side box for my dog. Um, and I use petty paws on my pet. It helps uh, trim back the claws, you know, the comb and everything. Also, I'm right now I'm looking through to see headset. That's another thing. Uh, as I'm going through my group that I'm, I'm involved with on Facebook, they're triggering different things that I haven't wrote down as far as, you know, the list goes on and on with different things that you carry in your truck. Um, so I just thought, thought of, you know, your wireless or Bluetooth headset. I don't prefer... The earbuds, to me, they're a distraction. I've said this before, that you need to have at least one ear open to hear a crunch or listen to the motor of your truck or your, you know, any horns or any kind of traffic accident up ahead or something, um, if it's on the CB and... Um, I wouldn't um, use earbuds. I don't preferably, you know, like them um, uh, per se myself. I appreciate everybody that tunes in, everybody that listens. And uh, please listen to the whole, each and every episode. You can find us on Facebook at Julia's Trucking Cafe. Anytime you would like to call in, Mondays the show is live between 6 and 7 p.m. Central Time. Or Call-in number is 213-943-3411. And one person asked, do you have, it, does anyone do this in their truck, have a mini savings account? Like for Christmas bond or, you know, if, if your paycheck is low that week, just keep throwing change in the jar. That's a, uh, another good tip to do. Just throw change in a jar, throw some singles in a jar, so then you always have extra money. I try to save my points up on my fuel card that I have. That um, if I have a low paycheck or something like that, that I need a drink or, you know, buy a snack or something, that I can use my points on my card. I'm just uh, scrolling through. Um, the group that I'm involved with it 
someone was asking about a cat. And having a cat in the truck. I'm also looking at um, CDL Life is one of the um, media outlets that I like to scroll through and see what's new in trucking. Right now, um, according to this, a driver was run over by his own truck at a Maryland rest area. And that was just seven hours ago. A truck driver lost his life on Saturday after he was struck by his own vehicle at a rest stop in Howard County, according to Maryland, Maryland State Police. So read a little bit to the... To you of this, police were called to the southbound I-95 rest stop near the Potanex River Bridge on Saturday at 7 o'clock in the morning after a truck driver became wedged between two commercial vehicles. According to Maryland State Police, 64-year-old Maryland-based truck driver had parked a semi-truck behind a dump truck at the rest stop and then exited the vehicle. As he walked between the dump truck and a semi-truck, his own vehicle drifted forward, pinning him against the dump truck. He was pronounced dead at the scene. This is the reason why you make sure you set your brakes. It says he parked it, but what, you know, did he set his brakes? How did he not see that it was roll forward. I don't understand that. I was in Maryland coming across 70 in Maryland uh, while I was going eastbound. And a driver, and this rest area is way up on a tall hill. And this driver didn't set his brakes, rolled down the hill and across the interstate into the median. And it's stuck. How do you not set brakes or not make sure that the brakes are working properly when you park your truck? I don't, I don't understand it. I really don't. I really don't get it at all. I appreciate all of my listeners. I hope that you enjoy the new introduction. I'm sorry my shows aren't completely a full hour. Um, A lot of the time, I have a good idea. I either talk too fast or, you know, just go over the, the information quickly. I'll try to do better in the future. I'm just a lowly truck driver trying to provide a service for all the new truck drivers out there. So once again, I appreciate you listening. Please listen to the whole show and um, keep the shiny side up. Stay safe out there, everybody. Until next time.
Stop by any of the 70 Denver area O'Reilly Auto Parts stores where you'll find everyday low prices on the parts you need to keep your vehicle at its best. Our guaranteed low prices ensure you're always getting our best deal. In fact, we'll match any auto parts store's price on any like item. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Buy any of the 70 Denver area O'Reilly Auto Parts stores where you'll find everyday low prices on the parts you need to keep your vehicle at its best. Our guaranteed low prices ensure you're always getting our best deal. In fact, we'll match any auto parts store's price on any like item. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly.